Randy Kay here. We all go through struggles at times, and I want to share with you through stories and insights and interviews with others how much God loves you. He loves you immensely, and that's what I hope you will hear through our interviews and what we have to share with you. Thanks for staying tuned. Here we go. Hi, this is Randy Kay with the Heaven Series, and I have a guest who is so critical for today that you need to invite your friends, your sons, your daughters, your, your, your neighbors to watch this because it is that important. Uh, my guest, Tony Smith, is the son of, of the 80s rapper Tone Loke. And uh, I, uh, back in the day, when I, in the 80s, I listened to uh, one of his uh, songs. Um, Tony came, was, was raised in that environment, but his story is fascinating because he has experienced uh, New Age, he's experienced uh, astrology, he's experienced uh, hell, he's experienced uh, and, and a an experience uh, in heaven or, or just an exposure to God in such a profound way. I can't even explain it. Only he can explain what that is like. So, Tony, it is great to have you with us today. Thank you. I'm so honored for being here. Honestly, thank you. Well, the, honor, to be <laughs> the honor is ours, Tony. This is going to this is going to just um, at the end of this. You're going to be so blessed. I promise you that that you are going to want to um, you are going to share you, want, you are going to want to share this with the world. So uh, to begin with Tony, I wanted to ask you now about uh, when when you were younger because uh, you're still young and, and my relative to me <laughs> yeah. but when you were younger, uh, you had an experience that was very spiritual for you. And that in high school, you uh, became a believer in Christ, but then you got involved in all kinds of things, all kinds yes. of religions and beliefs. So tell us about that. Yes, um, I started going to church in high school and just found the presence of God there and just wanted to allow people to experience that. Um, but then soon right after, um, I started to look into uh, debates between atheists and Christians and Muslims and Christians, just to see if I can get some better information um, about spirituality, about, you know, about God itself and how the apologetics was compared to those religions. Um, but my fault in all of that was that I was not staying uh, read up on the word of God like I was supposed to. I was not praying like I was supposed to. So I would allow the influence of all these other speakers kind of to tear me away from the gospel. And I started to question things um, that really led me to the spiritual path, which brought sadness, depression, brought addiction to drugs, uh, just completely left turn from where the direction God was heading me toward. And I'm um, just thankful that even through the spiritual uh, mess that I went through, God was able to reveal himself to me. And, you know, here I am proclaiming that Jesus Christ is real. He is alive. And um, the enemy is here to deceive us. And we just have to be, as Christians, well-versed in the word. We have to stay in his presence so that we cannot be deceived. Yeah. And you were, I think, it's fair to say that you were deceived uh, at yes. some point. And you got involved in different religions. Uh, so, you got involved in the new age uh, movement. So tell us about that. And you're involved, you had crystals. I think you had, you know, a thousand dollars worth of crystals and you had, uh, you know, chakra and all of the uh, yes. verbiage that uh, is used in, in that belief system. So tell us about how you got involved in, in all that. So I, um, I found some knowledge about the third eye, thinking that I was seeking some knowledge that the Bible didn't have. Uh, that all these spiritual uh, teachers and other religions had something to offer for me. So I began to look really deep into Buddhist ideology, Hinduistic ideologies, um, started believing in reincarnation, started buying crystals as I fell in love with these energies um, because I felt that I needed protection spiritually. So I started relying on them and idolizing them. 
um, started meditating every day to balance my chakras. Um, I started getting into the, the dark stuff of the witchcraft, which was using pendulum work, speaking to demonic spirits, which I thought were angelic beings, or I was speaking to my higher self, but absolutely wasn't. Um, and that just led me down to a path of me trying to find Jesus again, because it's like, it's like the devil removed the memory of all the good things and the presence of God that I had because I was focused on everything else but Jesus. So as I started to, to question Jesus, who he was, um, I was questioning to find Jesus theologically and intellectually instead of me just completely submitting myself, denying myself before the Lord humbly and just sticking with my heart to allow him to reveal himself to me through his presence, through his love that now floods my soul so that I can give the love to other people because the love of Jesus, uh, it cannot be mustered up on our own. It is a supernatural presence that completely transforms us. And um, it led me down to a dark path of using psychedelics, trying to get spiritual knowledge from my higher self in the spiritual realm, um, but really led me down to taking it over and over and over again, because I'm trying to get enlightenment. I'm trying to get that glow, that boost to start off my day because I wasn't filled on the inside. I was missing something. And ever since I found Jesus again, uh, I have been fulfilled and true happiness does come from the presence of the Lord, from staying in the Lord and not from meditation. Meditation, it brought a, a, a sense of false peace. It made me feel like I was in my own power and I was in, I was in control of what I was doing all the time. And I was, God let me do that. You know, like a dog on a leash, he's going to let the dog go, which is us. He's going to let us run off if we choose to, because that's our free will. And um, through that, it's just the, the, the tangible presence of God is what I like to stress. Uh, it's better than any crystal. The same way that these people uh, experience the crystal energy, the presence of God actually fills the soul. And I think that is what is the key to all this. Balancing the chakras and all of that stuff, it just opens you up to, to other entities to influence you absolutely. Because I didn't have the love of Christ in me. Because once again, you can't muster that up on yourself through meditation, through balancing a chakra. It is through the living being of Christ who has the power in all realms, spiritual realm and on earth, um, to the point where I was watching videos of spiritual gurus and other witches talk about Jesus, but they, they spoke about the false Jesus, not the real Jesus. My own construct of Jesus was that he is a light being. I compared him to a Buddha, a Muhammad, to any spiritual guru um, that is for the light. And that is a deception from Satan um, because through the experience that I experienced in my out-of-body experience, I realized instantly that Jesus Christ is alive and he is the son of God. And we are to pray to him and repent and we are to accept his love and that he's not just some person a being who should be glorified for the life that he lived. No, like we're called to that same type of lifestyle and we can do it with his help, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And I began using the pendulum to speak to spirits to get some forbidden knowledge, knowledge about people, what they were doing, some future events. And at the time when I was using it, I believed I was in my higher self. You know, I was vegan, um, felt like I had clean energy and all this type of stuff. But me do, just doing that practice itself, it opened me up. It was a door open. So demons would come. And as I'm doing the pendulum work, asking it questions, uh, I would start to feel like I was being choked. I would feel like I was getting suffocated. The room would get really hot and heavy. Energetically, the room was very heavy. So I would use the name of Jesus, not really uh, understanding that this is a real being, Jesus Christ. And it's not just the name of Jesus that removes the energy, which is true because, you know, his name has, the, has complete authority. Um, but I would use his name for my own benefit to remove the demons to continue to do the sinful work uh, of divination. And as I felt him remove the demonic energies, I started to feel him tug at my heart. And I was kind of trying to figure it out intellectually. Like, what am I feeling? I feel like I'm going to have to talk to him eventually. And that feeling alone led me to start questioning things about what I was doing in, in spirituality. 
uh, and having this Christ consciousness, which is which is a, another deceitful lie. There's no such thing as a Christ consciousness. The only way you can have the mind of Christ is if you submit yourself to allow Christ to, you know, to dwell in you, to, for the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. That's the only way you can have a Christ consciousness. And um, that's what led me to my out-of-body experience. Um, one night after using the pendulum, uh, I went to sleep and I don't want to say this is a dream or a vision because this is this experience was realer than it is in, in reality, to be honest. Um, I left my bed. I would believe it would be my spirit or my soul started walking. And as I'm walking to the doorway, I realized that the, the lighting in the room is brighter than usual. All of a sudden, I lose complete strength in my body. I go limp and I collapse on the floor. And as I collapse on the floor, the perimeter of my vision is starting to be consumed by darkness. So I'm being swallowed by this thick void of darkness. And it's like the darkness transported me or swallowed me deeper inside of itself. So I was still stationary in my positioning on the floor, um, but it's like an, I was on an elevator and it transported me downward. I, my soul, I say it's my soul because I, I process things here in my heart area. And I felt the voidness of God as I'm being swallowed in this darkness, just the emptiness of God's love, peace, rest, anything that is good that comes from God was being taken away instantly. So as I'm being swallowed into the darkness, I realize that I'm descending downward and I am below, I'm below earth. I am below God himself. I am below Jesus. Because when you go in this spiritual realm, this eternal place called hell, you instantly realize that Jesus Christ is real. And I'm looking around this place. I could, I have clear vision. It's like I could see far into the darkness, but it's so thick uh, that you can't see anything. Um, but I could still see. And I could see the, the presence of the darkness moving. It's like it has its own presence. It's its own you know, evil entity. And the presence of this darkness was fear. It was trying to suck fear from me. At the same time, I became fear. Uh, I became hopelessness. And I called out to God. But as I'm calling out to God, I realized that I'm cut off and I feel like God couldn't hear me. I'm looking up like, wow, Jesus is real. God was real. And I just got hit with this intense feeling of regret that I had all these opportunities to just drop my worldly knowledge, anything that I thought um, about Jesus, to just submit all those, all those thoughts and just pursue him with my heart to allow him to reveal himself to me. I didn't allow myself to do that because I thought I was wise and I was just being selfish. And that itself got me to realize, my soul knew this intuitively, instantly, that I chose to be there. And, you know, that's an unfortunate thing because there are some people there currently who, who chose to be there, but couldn't even imagine that they would choose that. But we do have the free will to choose. If we want to be with God for eternity or even on this earth, we have the choice to. And I chose not to. I chose to do things my way. When I'm doing these meditations and I'm having crystals uh, for my own benefit, I'm showing God that I don't need him. And in that instant, like I said, the regret was just immense. Honestly, that that feeling alone is it's not tolerable for the human being to the to experience. It was tolerable for my soul to experience because I became I was there with my sin. I became the fear, the hopelessness. I became that choice to not be with God. And um, I'm looking around and. I'm just realizing, okay, I, I'm here, but I'm not thinking anything. Uh, I'm not having like smooth thoughts. They're very scattered thoughts. They're scared thoughts. And I just really wanted to get out. I'm calling on the Lord and, and you know, he's not coming at the moment. And all of a sudden I hear these, these, uh, these entities coming behind me. I, they're demons and they are laughing. Uh, I was so disgusted by the laughter because I knew, um, that they were so happy that I was there. I was theirs for the taking and I was about to be consumed by them. And, and my feeling of my, my soul felt the voidness of, of God there. It, it literally crippled me. That, that feeling alone hurt so bad. 
because I, I once had the feeling of God, but I forgot about it. I, I never wanted to pursue it again. I wanted to go based off my own lustly pleasures. And I feel these entities coming towards me and they're laughing and I'm weak. I can't move. My, my, my soul, it literally can't move. And right as they're about to approach me, I, God pulls me out of that. Mm. So you're at what uh, may be hell or a place of hell, spiritual place of hell. Yes. All of this. And, and you said that God pulled you out of that. Yes. Um, so tell us about how, how God pulled you. First of all, you know, you have been involved at this point with virtually every ism there is probably in the, in the world religions, right? Buddhism, yes. Buddhism, uh, ism, you name it. So you had been involved in this, some, something, uh, uh, you, the allure of people perhaps, I guess, speaking to you uh, after you became a believer in Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior in high school and then these others were approaching you and saying, well, have you, you know, have you heard of the, this and that religion, what have you? And then, you know, it seems like the Holy Spirit is tugging at you, continually tugging at you, you know, as the way, the truth and the life that no one comes to the Father, but through Jesus. And so he's not letting you go. And you are there in hell. And you said that God saved you. What did he do? I mean, how did he call out to you? What, what happened? Honestly, he just pulled, I felt uh, God kind of like pierced through the voidness and just pulled me up and I felt the ascension. And then I, I wake up knowing that God pulled me up and by his grace that I was even able to experience that because like I said, I didn't believe that that, that that place existed. I just thought that reincarnation, you know, I could be born again uh, in a different lifetime or whatever the case is, which is, there's flaws in reincarnation because there's different uh, forms of reincarnation. So I didn't even have a set in stone belief in it because to be honest, after being in Christ, I realized that the spiritual world without Jesus, it's like the wild, wild west for, for spirits and souls. And there's no absolute truth in it. The fact that there's different forms of reincarnation, different deities and all that, there's nothing set in stone for, for an actual standard. And Jesus truly is the highest standard. There's no other God that loves you as much as, as Yahweh to send his son, Yeshua to die for you, no other God. And the wisdom, the wisdom that I found, uh, inside of scripture, because right after that experience, um, I had caught COVID-19 and I wanted to test Jesus. I wanted to see if he would, he would hear him, heal me. I, I constantly heard of healings of Jesus from diseases, uh, mental illnesses, anything. So I wanted to see if he would heal me from COVID. And when I tell you that I didn't take any medicine and I caught COVID the same time my cousin caught COVID and I have really bad asthma. When I started thanking the Lord in advance for healing me through the name of Jesus, I had pure faith. I knew that Jesus was real after that experience. And I knew that he would show up for me. I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. And mucus is just coming, shooting up from my, from my lungs. I'm spitting it out. I'm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And COVID was such a, a hard experience because it felt like death. It crippled me. I didn't want to move. Uh, I, I felt sick, very fatigued. And when I'm saying Jesus, it's like my, my, my bones and the strength in my body felt life again, felt actual life again. So I'm just glorifying the, the Lord at this point. Um, and soon, so soon after that, like I'm doing this for about a day or two, just worshiping, listening to the Lord. And I feel his presence, like the presence of holiness and the love that I felt. You, I can't experience that anywhere else. Like it just was another eye opener for me to what I used to experience. And I felt Jesus tell me, like I, I felt it in my spirit, reopen his word and read it. At the time, I believe that the Bible was manipulated, written for men for their own personal gain, that there's some truth in it, but it's not fully true. Because that's what spirituality does, uh, you know, in the new age. They'll take verses here and there. They'll pick and choose what they want to adopt to fit their understanding, to make them feel comfortable uh, in whatever they're doing to be a light, a light being. But it, that's the deception. I felt led to open up the word and to read it. And I was questioning like, God, like, like Jesus, do you really want me to, to open this? And I just felt the peace and love of support of the Holy Spirit to just do it. 
and I, and I open up that word. And as I'm reading uh, Proverbs, which I remember was my favorite uh, book when I was in high school, I feel God's presence. It's like, it's like the words came to life and it started feeling my soul. And I felt like I was able to breathe again. I was breathing, but I felt like I was actually breathing like life to my entire being just beaming from out of me. So I began to, to technically like eat the word because the Bible explains that, um, you know, we can't live off bread alone. We have to live off the, the words of the Lord. So the words of the Lord was literally feeding my soul. And that's when I realized like, yo, the Bible is, is actually the word of God. And, and, um, yeah, after that experience, just I became a full fledged believer in Christ. Wow, that's amazing. That's an incredible story. Um, gives me the proverbial goosebumps, I think, because I just I can I know there are people that are just going to be liberated through this. Uh, what you what you're sharing here, uh, Tony, and you um, at one point were involved in astrology. Yes. I felt that astrology, astrology, as we talked about uh, prior to this uh, interview, is very common today. Yes. Uh, amongst people, it's almost um, it's almost a given. You know, what's your sign? You know, tell us about that. How how you got involved with that? What you found uh, through your experience uh, with astrology? So I got into I, I, uh, astrology because um, I had lost my identity. I didn't know who I was and um, started getting into pantheism and started worshiping creation instead of the creator. So I'm worshiping the stars and believing that, um, that, that, that these ideas or whatever they are uh, were me. So I identified as my sign. And the Bible is pretty clear on that. Those were old Egyptian practices that the Lord actually condemned. Um, in Deuteronomy 18.10, it says, there shall not be found any among you Anyone who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. For these nations which you uh, will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord, your God, has not appointed such for you. So I was not created to adopt those practices that the Lord condemned. I was created to be one with Christ and to worship the Lord. And I identified as these signs and I started uh, identifying them, which caused division because now I'm looking at people judging them based on what their sign was. And when you come in Christ, you instantly realize that you are a new creation in Christ. He literally transforms you uh, with the mind of Christ, with love. We have to love every every single person, including our enemies. So in astrology, there's a lot of people who distant, distant themselves or have negative thoughts because of their other sign. And Christ completely just breaks that chain and literally just changes the whole narrative of me being something of who I thought I was. I actually found out the truth that I'm in Christ, uh, one of the most high, a child of the most high. And that this gift of everlasting life, I am able to be a part of instead of believing in astrology and then possibly having reincarnation. It's a very faulty uh, ideology because it's not set in stone. So even the Bible is very, very clear um, that you're supposed to, to deny yourself. If any, the Luke 9, 23 says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? So I'm thinking that I'm one with the world. I'm one with the universe now because I've found this forbidden knowledge. But Christ is telling me I have to deny who I think I am so that Christ can show me who I really am. And my favorite part is where it says uh, lost. That's my favorite part because it means that you belong somewhere. You belong with Christ. You don't belong who you think you are, who the world tells you are, because the Bible is very clear on, on the worldly knowledge and, 
and how the Lord thinks that's foolish. And it's actually us choosing to be against the Lord instead of just submitting to his word, to his presence and allowing him to reveal himself to you. Yeah. So, so good of you. And then those are great scriptures to uh, reference as well, because uh, the denial of self is kind of an, uh, the opposite of what these other religions are espousing. You know, they're saying, you know, self first and then, you know, uh, God fits into a multi-pantheism, as you said. Um, curious, Tony, as to w- the changeover, and I think you explained it to us there, but, but you have all of these um, experiences and these beliefs that are, are in your psyche, uh, if you will. And then what was the actual turning point for you when you pushed all of those away and you started following exclusively the God of Jesus Christ? His, his presence the love that floods the soul uh, cannot be conjured from any other source. I wasn't able to get this peace from drugs because I kept having to get it over and over again. It's a temporary fix, but the presence of Yeshua, when I, when I was struggling with addictions, with lust, sadness, any anger, when I, when I submitted myself and called on the Lord Yeshua to just heal me in that present moment, instantly he came Mm. and it's truth. I mean, how could I not want to tell someone about this? How could this not be true? It's it's nothing that I can do on my own because the presence of God is, is holiness. I'm not holy. I'm a sinner. So when I humble myself before the Lord and I raise my hands and I'm just seeking forth in stillness through my heart, it's like he elevates me when I'm humble before him and I admit my sins to him. Uh, it's, it's just a beautiful feeling. And I'm thankful for the gift that God has given us through Jesus for us to experience that. And um, I, I was one of the, uh, go ahead. No, no, I'm listening, please. I, I had allowed myself to, uh, because I thought I knew my own wisdom about life itself. I hardened my heart naturally. I was unable to hear the people who were telling me about Jesus. Cause once again, I was trying to figure them out here instead of through here. And um, in Acts 28, it's uh, 27, it says, for the heart of this people is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their, with their hearts. And I'm sorry, I, I, I messed that part up. Uh, no, no worries. Yeah, please. Well, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> do you want to, do you want to, uh, Read that last part, or do you want to continue so on? The last part is pretty much um, and understand what their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. So, pretty much, I had hardened my heart and I was unable to hear because I was stuck with my own doctrine, trying to figure out how it incorporates with spirituality. But I had to completely drop spirituality as a whole to be able to experience the fullness of Christ. Yeah, that, and you did. I mean, it's it's almost the. Uh, you know, and some other religions, it's uh, people fi- trying to find God within them. And then God revealed himself to you, his presence to you. So yes. it's an outward in versus an inward kind of out, if you will. Um, what would you say now, Tony, to those who are involved in one or more of these other uh, religions or belief systems how would you, what would you, what would you like to tell them about where they're at now and, you know, drugs or religion or whatever versus what they can experience that you have currently? Um, it, it literally changes, changes your life to where it's supposed to be. Your soul knows it. Your soul will know once you come in, in contact with Christ that you belong here. Um, if you are still believing in spiritual ideologies, really take a look look at your life and see if you're experiencing the gifts that Jesus has brought to us as Christians. Are you experiencing full peace? Are you experiencing love that floods your soul? Uh, Are you truly gaining wisdom? Are you turning from your old ways and becoming new? It's purely evident. Like I could see it in my life and I see it in other people's lives. And 
the power of God is more powerful than man. So you can continue to do it on your own, but you will not feel the fulfillment inside of your soul. Only Jesus can give that to you. I truly believe in every person's soul, that spot is for Jesus to fill that void, nothing else. Everything else will be temporary. And true love comes from Jesus. Uh, the Ten Commandments is about how to love God and how to love each other. So I think the importance is also loving each other because we are made in God's image. It's very important that uh, we honor his creation and we honor each other because Jesus died for love. He literally loved the people who was crucifying him. He conquered sin. He conquered death so that we can experience uh, the spiritual change that happens in us that is tangible. The Holy Spirit is tangible. His love is tangible. So I just encourage you to want to to be able to be in this tangible love uh, and holiness that you could be a part of instead of not. Yes. And, you know, such great uh, words of wisdom, Tony. And if we seek out, really seek out the truth, I mean, not just take somebody's word, other, another person's word, but really seek out the word of God. Um, you know, I know a lot of uh, people kind of, discount, try to discount the Bible, you know, ancient document and all that. But if you really make a study of it, uh, we had uh, on here um, Lee Strobel, who wrote the book, A Case for Christ, you know, where he delved into the investigation of the Bible and the accuracy. He was an atheist. I was an agnostic. I did a study at Northwestern University with a team to try to disprove uh, all religions, including Christianity. If you really get serious about it, you really want to know, is this thing true? You can do it intellectually or you can do it spiritually and accept just what Jesus said, that he is yes. the way, the truth and the life. If whoever confesses him as, the, as their Lord and Savior, uh, that that person is uh, saved. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Tony, for being with us today. I always leave the final words to our guests. Uh, and I think that at this point, you know, there's um, for those who really want to know the presence of the Lord and don't know him personally, you know, as as a relationship with God, uh, as, a, as a true presence. Um, would you first before the final word, would you uh, lead us in a prayer uh, for those who don't know him or maybe uh, think they did know him and, and now they question that. Would you lead a, those people in a prayer? Yes. That can actually Absolutely. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly. We just thank you for allowing us to be able to, to be able to hear about your word, Lord God. Thankful for hearing about the testimony that I was able to give them, Lord God. I just pray for every single person listening that you let them feel your presence, Lord God, for those who want it, Lord God. Fill them with your love right now. Thank you for the wisdom and the mental clarity and anyone that's going through addictions or struggles in life uh, with the emotional torment, mental torment, spiritual attacks. We break those attacks in Jesus name because the name of Jesus has the authority in all realms of life. So we thank you, Lord, for lifting bondage right now in Jesus name, filling us with your love and your presence, Lord God, and just to guide us to be closer to you, Lord God, that after this video ends, that you allow things to stay on their heart that you want them to be there so that they can pursue you, Lord God, to encourage them to stay in the word more, to seek you with their whole heart, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, for the grace of allowing us to live another day, for another chance to live with you, Lord God, on earth, and just as much as we can go and live in heaven with you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Tony, if uh, if those uh, out in the viewing audience or listening audience would like to kind of give you a word or, I mean, share or, or get in touch with you, you can go to our randyk.org site on the contact page and just let us know what your message is uh, to Tony and we can make sure that he gets that. Uh, and then also you can have all of our resources uh, from that site as well. Uh, we look forward to hopefully having you back, uh, Tony, because I, I think this is a relationship uh, that that we have today that I think uh, can continue in the future is going to help so many people. So again, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Praise God. Thank you for having me.
Okay. Well, the pleasure and praise God indeed. So I, I'm going to give you the last word and then uh, we're going to sign off. Just anything that I have on my heart? Anything you have on your heart, yeah. Uh, please drop any constructs that you have gained from this world. It will not satisfy your soul. The presence of the Lord is tangible. Please seek him. He will heal you in anything that you're going through. He will heal you mentally, spiritually, and physically. He is alive and he is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And do not want you to experience hell. I want, I want to see you in heaven when we're worshiping the Lord. Um, this is, this is really great, the fact that we have the opportunity to have a true relationship with the creator of the universe. And it's a special relationship because he wants you and he has a destiny for you. You are called for something in this present moment. Even if you're going through a hard time, you're actually in the perfect time for Christ to reveal himself to you or to get back into the faith. Jesus is always wait, waiting for you with open arms, always. He's here not to condemn you, but to forgive you and give you love that you deserve once you find Christ. He will always be there waiting for you. Um, just thank you for like listening to my testimony, and I deeply love you guys. This is the love of Christ that flows through me. It's not my own love. And I just pray that you allow him to allow him into your heart, to allow him to reveal himself to you. Wow. Um. There's not much more to be said outside of thank you, praise the Lord. And uh, until we meet again, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take care and God bless. Take care. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org, where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.